this video we're going to continue to build our tool belt of tricks to take derivatives with shortcuts we've so far got the power rule we've got the product rule we've got the quotient rule and now we're going to take a look at the question how do we take derivatives of a composition of functions. And the first, we're going to start with what is called the chain rule. And the idea of the chain rule is we have some function h of x that is made up of a composition of functions. It has an outside function. We're going to call it f. And inside it is some other function, g of x. And the way we calculate the derivative of this composition of functions is we're first going to take the derivative of the outside function, where the inside stays exactly the same. And then we're going to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So this is going to become our chain rule that we are going to be using today. You should become very familiar with it, just like your product rule, quotient rule, and exponent rule. To kind of look at how this works, what we're going to do, at least initially, is we're going to let u equal the inside function. So for example, if f of x equals 8 times negative x to the fourth plus 3x squared plus x minus 6. What you might notice is this block of negative x to the fourth plus 3x squared plus x is inside grouped together as an inside function. So we might let u equal that inside function, negative x to the fourth plus 3x squared plus x. And when we do, our function then becomes 8u minus 6, where all that stuff has become the u. And now it's f of u equals that. Well, we're going to take the derivative both of f of u and of u. The derivative of f of u is just 8. And the derivative of u we know is negative 4x cubed plus 6x plus 1. So to put it all together in our final answer, our derivative of f of x our formula says we take the derivative of the outside function, which was 8, and we multiplied it by the derivative of the inside function, which is negative 4x cubed plus 6x plus 1. And then we can go ahead and distribute that 8 through to get negative 32x cubed plus 48x plus 8 for our final derivative. But what we see is the parts, we've taken the derivative of the outside function times the derivative of the inside function. Let's look at another example where we try and do that exact same thing. Let's say f of x equals 4 times 3x minus 8 squared plus a 3x minus 8 minus 3. And what we notice, again, we've got this group, this 3x minus 8 sitting inside it. So that's what we're going to let our u equal, 3x minus 8. Then our function becomes a function in terms of u. It just becomes 4u squared plus a u minus a 3 
because each of those u's really just represent the 3x minus 8. And then we can take the derivative of the outside function, which is going to be 8u plus 1. And the derivative of the inside function, which is just going to be 3. So for our final derivative, it's the derivative of the outside, which is 8u, well, g u is the 3x minus 8 plus 1 times the derivative of the inside function, which was just 3. Well, multiplying this out then, we end up with, let's distribute the 3, 24 times 3x minus 8 plus 3. And distributing the 24 in, we get 72x minus 192 plus 3. Or for our final answer, 72x minus 189. Let's do one more example like this. And then maybe we'll try and simplify and streamline the process after that. Let's look at f of x equals 6x cubed plus x all raised to the fourth power. Now, what you might see is inside the function, we have this 6x cubed plus x. Outside, we're just cubing that result. So we're going to let u be the inside function 6x cubed plus x. And that makes our function f of u equal to that u all raised to the fourth power. So we can take the derivative of the outside function. That's 4 times u to the third power. And we can take the derivative of the inside function. That's 18x squared plus 1. Our final derivative is the derivative of the outside function, which is 4 times u. But u, we know, is 6x cubed plus x raised to the third power times the derivative of the, outside, of the inside function, which is 18x squared plus 1. And it's not going to be worth multiplying that out, so let's leave that as our final solution. Now, this process almost feels a little clunky because there's a lot of pieces moving around. What actually happens in practice usually is we skip the u step and just think we're going to take the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. So looking at that previous example, I've left the solution on the screen here. Let's do f of x equals 6x cubed plus x raised to the fourth power. Noticing that the 6x cubed plus x is the inside function, we'll say we're going to take the derivative of the outside function. The outside function is all the stuff in yellow raised to the fourth power. The derivative of stuff to the fourth is 4 times the stuff raised to the third power. Then we can multiply by the derivative of the inside function. And that derivative is 18x squared plus 1. And that's a more direct way to get at that same answer. Taking the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. So let's try finding the derivative of the sixth root 
of 4x squared plus 2x minus 1. We should be getting used to, by now, whenever we see a root, we treat that as a fractional exponent. So this is really 4x squared plus 2x minus 1 raised to the 1 6th power. And we see this function really is a bunch of stuff raised to the 1 6th power. So when we calculate our derivative, we take the derivative of the outside, which is stuff to the 1 6th. We have 1 6th times the stuff raised to the negative 5 6th power. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is 8x plus 2. And that gives us our final derivative. This is the process that I want you to be very good at as we're working on examples in class. So let's do another one. Let's say f of x is equal to 5 over x squared plus 3 to the fourth power. Again, we're used to seeing stuff to the fourth power in the denominator. We can pull that up as 5 times x squared plus 3 to the negative fourth power so that we can use our power rule on it. And then we see this is really 5 times some stuff raised to the negative fourth power. So for the derivative, we pull the exponent out front to get negative 20 times the stuff, x squared plus 3, raised to the now negative fifth power. And then we multiply by the derivative of the stuff, which is just 2x. Uh, let's do a little bit of simplifying. Uh, that negative exponent moves things down. So we're going to have x squared plus 3 to the fifth power. We also have negative 20 times 2 is negative 40 times x. And so we have our final answer for our derivative of negative 40x over x squared plus 3 raised to the fifth power. So that's our chain rule. We take the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. What we need to work on now, then, is seeing how we can combine our rules together. Because we've seen product rule, we've seen quotient rule, and we've seen chain rule. So let's see what we can do with f of x equals 4x plus 1 to the sixth power times 2x squared plus 3x minus 4 raised to the eighth power. Looking at the overall picture, as we take the derivative, we've got a product of the stuff to the fourth power times the stuff to the eighth power. And just the nature of using the word stuff suggests that we've got a chain rule. The 4x plus 1 is raised to the sixth. And the 2x squared plus 3x minus 4 is raised to the eighth. So as we use our product rule, the product rule says we take the derivative of the first, pulling the 6 out front times 4x plus 1 raised to the fifth, times the derivative of what's inside. That's just 4 times the second. 2x squared plus 3x minus 4, all raised to the eighth power. Plus, the product rule then says we take the derivative of the second part, which is 8 times the stuff raised to the seventh power times the derivative of what's inside, which is 4x plus 3. And then we still have to multiply by the first, which is 4x plus 1 raised to the sixth power. Let's just do a little bit of cleanup of just the easy parts. I'm just going to multiply 6 times 4 is 24 times 4x plus 1 to the fifth 
times 2x squared plus 3x minus 4 raised to the eighth plus, there's really no simplifying on the second part, 8 times 2x squared plus 3x minus 4 to the seventh times 4x plus 3 times 4x plus 1 to the sixth. And we have our entire derivative. Let's try one that combines the chain rule with the quotient rule. Let's say f of x is equal to x squared minus 5 raised to the fourth power divided by x minus 8. We do see a quotient rule. We've got some stuff raised to the fourth divided by the x minus 8. And again, because we said stuff to the fourth, that really suggests that that x squared minus 5 is that inside function that we're going to work with. So using our quotient rule, we'll take the derivative of the top. Using the chain rule, we pull the 4 out front, x squared minus 5 to the third, times the derivative of the inside, which is just 2x. And then we multiply by the bottom, x minus 8. Minus, we take the derivative of the bottom, which is just 1, times the top, which is x squared minus 5 to the fourth, all over the denominator squared, x minus 8 squared. Again, let's do a little cleanup. 2x times 4 is 8x times x squared minus 5 to the third times x minus 8. minus the x squared minus 5 to the fourth all over the x minus 8 squared. And we have our final derivative. Let's do one last problem. And let's switch the order this time. Instead of having a chain rule inside of a quotient rule, let's look at one that has a quotient rule inside of a chain rule. We've got 5x minus 4 over 8x minus 1 all raised to the fifth power. Well, just using the chain rule, we can pull the 5 out front for f prime of x times the stuff. You see, all that stuff is inside, stays the same. 5x minus 4 over 8x minus 1, all raised to the fourth. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inside. Well, the inside, you see, is a quotient. 5x minus 4 divided by 8x minus 1. So we'll multiply by the derivative of the top, which is 5, times the bottom, which is 8x minus 1 minus the derivative of the bottom, which is 8, times the top, 5x minus 4, all over the bottom squared, 8x minus 1 squared. And let's simplify that second fraction a little bit by distributing the 5 and distributing the negative 8. So we've got 5 times 5x minus 4 over 8x minus 1 to the fourth times 40x minus 5 minus 40x plus 32 all over 8x minus 1 squared. And sure enough, we can take 40x minus 40x is 0. So for our final derivative today, we have 5 times 5x minus 4 over 8x minus 1 to the fourth times negative 5 plus 32 is 27 over 8x minus 1 squared for our final solution. 
So that is our chain rule. We take the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. And along the way, we might need to use some product and quotient rule as well. This is really great review of all the derivative properties we've seen so far. So take a look at practicing these on the homework assignment. Come to class with questions. We'll discuss them further and do a few applications. We will see you then.